going to use, where's the onions? So how did you do your hair this morning, Kristen? Is this your natural texture? No, I just ran the straightener over, like... Just a little bit? Yeah. Okay. All right, so one thing that's important with flat ironing is heat protection. I'm going to be using the iron silk. It has a hold of 7. So that's on a scale of 0 to 23. So it's not a huge hold. You're not going to really feel it in your hair. One thing you should think of, a lot of times girls, um, you know, teenagers or adults too, they will go over their hair tons of times with the flat iron because they can't seem to get it straight enough. So a huge problem I think is that you might be taking too big of a section. So if you guys see, she has all this hair. If I just go in here, do you see how much hair on the inside isn't going to get heated? So that's going to make her keep going over and over and over, it, and it's going to make her have split ends, damage, things like that. So I recommend that you do smaller sections so that the heat is evenly saturated. And I also do the spray section by section. I don't like to do the whole thing at first. And you also want to make sure it's not too wet, so you want to spray about six inches away. brush it through. And then the thing you want to remember is compression. So you want to make sure that you're compressing pretty nicely and always moving the flat iron. If you leave it in one spot of the hair too long, it's going to get too much damage in that spot. And you also might get um, like divots where you left it in too long. Another thing too is when you go up towards the scalp when you first start, you don't want to clamp as soon as you get in because you're going to get those lines. Have you ever gotten those lines in your hair? So what you want to do is you want to come in and gently glide out and compress at the same time. So that will avoid any and all lines for you. And you can use a comb or you can use a round brush. Is there a round brush in there? If you want more of a bevel on the ends instead of a really straight look, you can actually curl this, put the heat on it, and roll it up on a brush and let it cool for a second. Let it out, and you see how she has a really nice bevel on her ends now? Mm -hmm. Everybody can see. And you can do that with your whole hair, and you get really nice, pretty movement in it, as opposed to a stick straight look. Did I mess anything on there? Oh, another thing you can do, instead of beveling it under, you can make it go the opposite way. So you can actually flip your hand the opposite way and go over top, flip the ends up. And this is pretty too for maybe hair my length or your length or like shorter lengths, because you can just flip that up and it gives it a really nice style. Someone told me, one of my coworkers, she said actually to make it look appear long, like to make it appear longer, you can flip the ends out and for some reason it makes it look longer. I guess it's her personal opinion, but I like to wear my hair like that too. So now I will show you curling with a flat iron. For more hold, I use spray starch. This gives the same heat protection as iron silk, it has more of a hold. And what this does is it internally, when the heat gets on it, it reinforces whatever you're doing. So it really helps to lock it in. <coughs> so with curling with a flat iron, this would take a long time for her because she has tons of hair. I probably wouldn't opt for that for her. Maybe someone with a thinner texture of hair. Because you have to use smaller sections. Spray the spray starch on. you're going to come in with your flat iron. You want to remember to always keep tension on the flat iron because if you don't and you try to go like this, you're going to lose the hair and it's not going to stay on the hot plates. So you'll come in, give it tension, wrap it around twice, and lightly glide out. Make sure you have lots of tension on it. Can everybody see that curl? Can you see it, Kristen? Cool. So you can do that. You can do that with the whole hair. And what you can do, too, is you can either do what Rachel did and go all in the same direction to create those waves, or you can go in opposite direction so that you get more separation of the curl. But that would take a long time, too. All right, and then on the front, I will show you guys the beach wave. 
So this is really easy. What I would recommend doing is splitting the sides from front to back, about where your ear is, and then split this in two sections. That's all you need, because we're going to be working with bigger sections. Flip that up. And then you'll split this into two. And you can either use a wand. Has anybody ever used a wand? No? You have? Good. You can either use that or a curling iron. I'll show you both ways. So with this beach wave, um, I actually did my hair like this today. So this is what it looks like on shorter hair, and I'll show you what it looks like on longer hair. Um, it's a lot more casual looking than her formal curls, and it's supposed to be a lot more, um, almost like disheveled kind of. And there's a bunch of different ways to do it, so if you want to learn more ways, Rachel or anybody else can show you different ways to do it too today. So I'm going to go away from her face. I'm going to hold the iron up like this and behind the hair. I'm going to wrap it, but I'm not going to wrap it all the way to the ends. I'm going to leave some ends out. I'm going to go the opposite way. So since I held the iron back at first, I'm going to hold it forward. Leave some ends out. So that's with the wand. Now with a regular curling iron, if you don't feel right using a wand, You'll split this in two sections also, and do the same thing. You'll want, to, you'll want to start the same as you did this curl. So you'll start behind. You're going to open your clamp, and you're going to put it in. Close the clamp, and what you're going to do is you're going to roll up, open the clamp, come down a little bit, roll up, come down a little bit, and leave your ends out, and let it go. So that's another similar way that you can do that. Same thing, you hold your section straight out. The barrel is going to be in front of the hair this time. So now she has these curls. And then you're going to want to shake them out. Make them more casual. I either like to use a um, wool shake or wax glass. It depends. I think the wool shake has more of a crunchier texture, and I like that personally. So you will spray this in and just piece it out like that. So you see how organic and beachy that looks as opposed to her more formal style? Mm -hmm. And then with, you know, you do that, the same thing on the other side, and then in the back, I would section right down the middle. And I would split it into three sections instead of two because she has a lot more hair. So I would do one in the nape, I would do one in the middle, and then on top. And you can do something similar to what Rachel did, both Rachels, and you can hold this straight up and actually put the curling in, iron in here if you want more volume. Always just remember to leave the ends out. You can leave as, as much or as little as you want and you can alternate too. Sometimes you can leave three inches of ends out, sometimes you can leave an inch out. It's really about just a really casual look. Anybody have any questions about anything I went over? What do you think? Like Is it pretty? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're right about the wool shape for more of like a beachy organic look too. Because mm -hmm. I like I love the wax glass. If, if any of my clients are here, they know I'm obsessed with the wax glass. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're, we're my fellow station. Yeah, but um, but I like the wax glass for more like. More like curl curls, not like beachy mm -hmm. organic curls, not like looser curls. I like them better for more spiral curls, ribbon curls. Another thing I meant to show you, there's a new product called Powder Grip. So this would be good like as a second day style too. And if you need, you know, on the second day sometimes it gets a little bit flatter. This is a brand new product. It's actually a powder. And it gives you more like a matte, like grittier texture. What you would do is you would take a little section top. You flip it over and I kind of zigzag back and forth between the section with the powder. And I do about two sections on top. And then you can just rub it in. And this gives you like more grip on your roots, almost like your hair is like how it is on its second or third day, but it's not dirty. So it gives you some really nice volume. Can you feel up there, Kristen? 
How does it feel? Yeah, it's like gritted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that will give you some volume on your second day look too. Thank you. Thanks.